Now, the ANC has expressed concern over utterances attributed to Trevor Manuel, describing the party apparently as being the party's tenure in power as being three wasted decades. The comments by the former NEC member were published on news website News24, and these comments were said to have been made during a webinar discussion hosted by the Catholic Parliamentary Liaison Office and the Hans Seidel Foundation. Trevor Manuel joins us tonight to explain what exactly was said in that particular discussion. Mr. Manuel, good evening. It's a pleasure to have you with us. We've heard of nine wasted years, never three wasted decades. Explain to us what exactly was said. Kathy, um, thank you very much. Let me just say that uh, uh, when I saw the statement by the ANC, I was pretty struck because uh, Pulen Mabe made no attempt to contact me to establish from me but let me also say that the journalist uh, whose byline appears on, on the article didn't check anything with me. I know that she was on the webinar. Um, and I think that, that the headline in that story is taken completely out of context. Uh, having said that, let me just uh, emphasize a few points. Uh, firstly, I mean, because if you, read, if you read a story, you will understand that there are major contradictions. You can't say... Uh, three wasted decades, and talk about the progress uh, in economic growth, jobs, and uh, a range of other issues. And I spoke particularly in respect of economic growth of the years between 2000 and 2007. Uh, and like you, Cathy, I uh, firmly believe that uh, we, we lived through a decade that was wasted under the leadership of Jacob Zuma. Um, but having said that, you know, it's also important to recognize that these are not linear processes. When you take institutions apart, you set things back very badly. And if you took a snapshot of, uh, uh, let me just cite a few examples, the NPA now. Um, and, and last week on Women's Day, uh, the National Director of Public Prosecutions, uh, uh, Advocate Batoy, was talking about how the institution has been hollowed out. So don't think that it was just appointing a new head because everything inside it was taken apart. Similarly, if you followed the trend of uh, the communication by the Commissioner for the Revenue Service, uh, Commissioner Edward Kiesvetter, you'll see that the SARS was also white anted It was hollowed out inside. And so what he's had to do over the past year or just over that, has been to rebuild from scratch. But scratch is actually not where it was when he left. It scratches further back because systems have been taken apart and the world has moved on. But you can also look at the way in which the Scorpions uh, uh, was taken apart and uh, replaced by the Hawks. And then you can track through who was appointed as heads of the Hawks and just how the entire criminal justice system was depleted during that decade. And so you have to go back not to May of 2009 when Jacob Zuma became president. You actually have to go back further because the skills aren't there now. Uh, the skills have to be reacquired. And you can also look at a series of other issues, Cathy. You can look at, t t take a basic issue like, like train services in Prasa. I think that it's correct that in a country like South Africa where Spatial development is still old order, apartheid spatial development. People live far from places of work. The state has the responsibility to ensure that people can commute cheaply, safely, um, uh, and, and on time. And uh, PRASA ought to provide that. But PRASA was so hollowed out that uh, uh, all train services stopped until just recently, and now there's 50 people in the coach. These are issues that impact very directly on the lives of people. Let's not mm -hmm. pretend that it's not there. Similarly, you can look at the state of local government, uh, uh, look at uh, uh, the availability of water services, look at uh, 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 roads, look at sports fields, and then you begin to understand that uh, the, these institutions have all been hollowed out. And if you look at the PPE scandal uh, that has that is affecting us at present, we understand that this has an impact on the poorest amongst us. And these are issues that, that we shouldn't tolerate. So it might be the same party in, in, in power, but they haven't managed 
the political administrative interface and ensure that there's policy continuity. So somebody else comes in, uh, they, they throw out everybody, they start policies anew, and there's no continuity despite the fact that the ANC has been in power since 1994. I think it's a tragedy. I think that we should talk about it. And I think that we must back President Ramaphosa. Just to go back, Kathy, to the webinar you refer to, I spoke about the need for us to understand the crisis that impacts us now, uh, to take uh, the spirit of President Ramaphosa's uh, words and say, let's build a new social compact and understand that life for all South Africans must get better from here. So let's utilize what we now know of what has gone wrong during COVID-19, forge a new social compact and build into the future but measure to ensure that uh, the lives of our people improve as the Constitution requires of us. If I'm to take just purely what, what you've said during this time of this interview, it sounds to me that you're pointing to a lot of regression that has taken place in different uh, sectors of, of the state. How much of that do you lay at the door and as a fault of the entire ANC government because uh, you know you, you're also talking about leaders that come and go and you're referring to some people as they but they have always been part of the ANC it's only ever been the ANC that's been in charge of this country post-democracy yes uh, uh, I'm not in disagreement with you on, mm. on that Kathy I'm mm. saying that part of the model the ANC actually with the, with the greatest respect to people who serve in the Economic Transformation com, uh, Committee, uh, led by, ably by Enoch Bolanguana, have no capacity to get into the nitty-gritty of budget allocations and stuff like that. The ANC has the responsibility as a political party to ensure that those who are deployed into the state respond to the calling. Did the ANC at any point ask what was happening to state-owned enterprises when they were being dismantled. What happened to SAA when it was being taken apart uh, uh, a few years ago? Uh, what happened to ESCOM when it was being looted? What happened to Transnet? Those kinds of things the ANC has given short shrift, um, but pretends that it can deal with the nitty-gritty of policy discussion. And I think that there's nobody actually guarding the guardians. That's the problem. And political parties ought to be involved in that space and ensure that those who serve in government would represent the best interests and the best spirit of our constitution and a tradition that comes a very long way. President Ramaphosa, in that seven-page letter you referred to earlier, Cathy, speaks of the ANC, of Albert Lutuli, of Oliver Tambo, and Nelson Mandela. What is that spirit? How is it? Uh, how, where was it lost? And how do we restore the spirit? in order to then have the systems that we can effect change in the lives of people. It's not just a flag and a logo. It's about how we conduct ourselves in relation to our people. And of course, that conduct has drawn quite a lot of questions because there seems to be a lot of contradiction over what different leaders of the ANC are doing. You'll read one statement that condemns corruption, and then on the other end, you'll look at KZN, where Zandile Gumeda, who's in court for corruption allegations, is reinstated as a member of the provincial legislature. Are there many ANCs, and are they all pulling in, the, in, in different directions? Well, I think that that's a profound, that's a profound question, or, or profound questions, Cathy. I mean, if you look at the Nazareth resolutions on corruption, I think that the, one of the, the legal phrases that is most abused is innocent until proven guilty. Um, how do you take somebody who's on trial for corruption, uh, move them out of a position as a backbencher in, in local government, uh, multiply their salary by two, and then move them into the provincial legislature. How do you reward people like that? Uh, similarly, I know it's an ongoing battle, but where people have been called out in the Mutau report for their involvement in VBS issues, how does the ANC go against itself? How does it go against its own resolutions of the 2017 conference? And so you can run through a long list of contradictions that present because people look after those who are their friends. If you've adopted the resolution, then stick by it. That's all that people are asking for. Mm -hmm. Similarly, 
I think that as South Africans, we should be entitled to clean administration and predictable government, especially if it's the same party in power. Many don't believe that President Ramaphosa has what it takes to rid the ANC of corruption and subsequently to rid the country and his own administration of corruption. Cathy, President Ramaphosa is the best in the ANC at the moment and I think we have to back him and we have to call it out and we must ensure that when we talk about things that are wrong, it isn't because we dislike either the African National Congress or President Ramaphosa, but we dislike bad behavior, we dislike corruption, and we have to back those who will take on corruption, and we have to ensure that their hand is strong so that they can deal with what they must. And if you follow certain trend lines, and you've seen it now in the Zondo Commission, as they close in on asbestos roof surveys and Estina Dairy and so on and so on, hopefully uh, uh, the, the judicial processes will also be reinvigorated to ensure that those who have acted badly in the past will be uh, called to account, will be criminally charged, and will be convicted in the not-too-distant future. And as those things happen, uh, the President needs to know that there are many good South African women and men who will back him to the hilt as he takes a very tough course to ensure that we can restore this country to, its, to the greatness we once felt as South Africans. Is the President on a collision course with his Secretary General, especially if he's to continue pushing for those who are accused of corruption to step aside? I'm not uh, in, in the room there. I'm no longer a part of the National Executive Committee, the National Working Committee. I've never been a part of the, the top six. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's quite important what... Uh, uh, Advocate Batoy said the other day, don't target individuals, target crimes. And so don't, don't set it up as a conflict between two individuals. Uh, uh, set it up as an issue between uh, somebody who wants the best for South Africans and somebody who may have had his hands in the cookie jar too deeply. Trevor Manuel, let's leave it there for tonight. He is, of course, um, the former National Executive Committee member, Trevor Manuel, also former finance uh, minister. Let's leave it there.